Hello everyone, Bruce here with DIY Homestead Projects. Today I'm going to be working on an old Kenmore gas oven. The problem that I'm having with it is it takes forever for it to uh, warm up to the preheat temperature or it just never beeps to let you know that it's actually reached the preheat temperature. So for the research I've done, probably the most common item is going to be that the uh, igniter is, is faulty or bad. Now it will eventually light and we can cook food in it, but it takes a long time and I, I just think that that's not working right. So you're only going to need a few simple tools for this. You need a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, I'm going to, I'm going to use a, a universal flathead and or Phillips and a pair of wire cutters, small wire strippers. Or you could probably just use a utility knife or something for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble it down to the point where I can get to the igniter. And that's fairly simple. I'll show you exactly how I do that. And I'm going to run a quick test on it to see and time how long it takes for the, uh, for the burner to light. My igniter glows, so at least it glows and it eventually lights, but I want to know how long that takes so that when I put the new one in, I'm going to do the same test and compare the two and see if it's improved it. All right, so let's get down there and open up the oven and we'll start taking things apart. I'll leave a link in the description of the part that I bought. It was less than $20, but if you need to look up your oven's model number, mine is in this bottom drawer. I just pulled the drawer out and mine's on the right hand side on that white tag. You could take this door off if that's what you decide to do. I'm going to work around it. Take your racks out. I've got two of them in here. along the back edge mine has two thumb screws or you can use a flathead screwdriver and once you get the pan out of there now you can see this I don't know heat shield the igniter is just below the heat shield and the only thing you need to do to take that heat shield off is there's a little nut right there. I'm just going to use a crescent wrench to loosen that nut and then it just lifts off. Now once you have that heat shield off of there you can see here's the igniter. This tube is the burner. So I'm going to start it up and start a timer. We'll see how long it takes for the uh, gas to ignite. All right, it's just barely starting to glow. Let me turn the light off. So I'm going to shut it off before it gets too hot, pull it out, unplug it, and turn the gas off so I can start taking that igniter off of there before it gets too hot. Now my igniter is held in with two small screws that have a quarter inch head on them. So I have a quarter inch socket just on a driver here, hand driver. I should be able to loosen both of those and to get the igniter out of there. has two wires coming out of it. One goes back through the back here, back through the back corner, and then one goes down to that safety valve. So I need to unplug that. Now to get back into the corner you need to pull the bottom drawer out a little bit. So you can get to that back corner and then there's one screw again with that quarter inch driver to take that one screw out and 
and then undo the plug. Just pinch the tab and pull the plug off. And I need to unplug this other one from the uh, control valve and we'll have it out. Okay, so now we're going to get the uh, igniter set up. This is the old one. Now be careful you don't touch that, especially on the new one. That's a very fragile piece and if you touch it, it'll mess it up. The new igniter came in this box and it has the igniter with a couple of wires and two these are ceramic wire nuts made for the heat. I'll cut them both fairly close to the old igniter. One of them, it doesn't matter which one, these don't have a polarity. I'll cut right about here. Strip that back about half inch. and this one about a half inch. Take one of my ceramic wire nuts. This other one, I'll cut it about the same. Strip it back. So I can connect this extension to it. and wire nut those two together. So now that's all set and ready to go back in. And it just goes in exactly the opposite of the way it came out. Okay, we've got the new one installed and uh, hooked up and the gas is back on, the power is back on. So I'm going to turn the oven on and we'll check the timer and see how long this one takes. And it's starting to glow, so let's turn the light off. And there it is, it's lit. It's quite a bit quicker than the last time. So we'll shut it off and finish putting it back together. All right guys, so I've got my oven working again. Everything seems to be operating properly. And it was a cheap fix, less than $20. It took me a while because I was filming, but probably a 30 minute job at the most, even just for a, you know somebody who hasn't done a lot of work like that. Real simple tools, I left a list of the tools. I'll leave a link in the description of the part that I bought. And that's an Amazon affiliate link, so if you choose to, uh, purchase off of those links so I could potentially make a little bit of profit off of that and I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you uh, like the video or you got some value out of it, 
Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't ever been to the channel before, consider subscribing. Love to have you on board. And uh, we'll see you guys all on the next video.